Hey team, Richard Tubb here, back with a special short bonus ode of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants. Now, we recently had the big annual Microsoft Ignite event in Seattle, USA. And of course, as usual, the event was loads of big announcements. It, fe- it featured loads of news coming out of the show. So today, I'm joined by James Marshall of Microsoft in the UK, who is going to give us some insights into the biggest and most interesting stories from Ignite. James, welcome to Sub Talk. Hey, uh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here on this bo- a bonus ode. By the way, is that are we is that going in the dictionary? Bonus ode. It's a new word. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think we've copyrighted that one as well. The podcast community. So yeah, this is definitely a bonus ode. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, I guess before we jump in, James, let's introduce you properly to our listeners. Tell us about you, uh, your journey, your role at Microsoft. Right now, this is my. I'm going into my 14th year at Microsoft, and um, I'm. I have a. It feels like every couple of years, it's a bit like Doctor Who. You reinvent yourself. There's something else to do. Uh, and right now, I'm an Azure uh, success manager. Um, which I'll explain in a second. But uh, I started off uh, as an IT technician working in schools all those years ago. That was my entrance into IT. And then eventually found my way to Microsoft and then spent the last 13 and a bit years into my 14th year now uh, doing all sorts of stuff from before Office 365 was even a thing uh, to helping customers get off Windows XP uh, all the way through to leading our Azure business in SMB for the last few years. And then now helping our partners uh, build really, really successful Azure businesses. So I've been working with partners of Microsoft for well over a decade, but very specifically now it's all about, hey, you've got an Azure business or you want to build an Azure practice. How do you do that really well? How do you make it super successful? Um, and you know, how do you how do you stay ahead of the curve in terms of what's coming and and how you address all those big opportunities that we keep talking about at events like uh, Ignite? Yeah, awesome. And um, we'll we'll go into that a little bit more. In fact, I've already got an open invitation to you, James. You must come back and we'll sit down and do a longer form interview where you can talk a bit about Microsoft Azure and the the impact on MSPs. I want to give a shout out though to our mutual friend Guy Gregory very old friend of mine who also works at Microsoft UK and is from the MSP industry. And I spoke to Guy and I said, look, I'd love to speak to somebody about Microsoft Ignite, the big event. And he said, actually, the man you need to speak to is James Marshall. So thank you, Guy, if you listen to this. Appreciate the connection. And uh, James, it's good to uh, to make your acquaintance here. But uh, I feel like there's no pressure now. Guy's, re- Guy's made a recommendation. I feel like, you know, the, the pressure's just gone up ever so slightly. <laughs> well, there you go. Guy, you're a, he's a lovely guy. Uh, you know, no pun intended there. So if you are half as good as Guy as James, you are going to be an absolute rock star for the MSP industry. So we appreciate you coming on. I will do my Microsoft best. Ignite. Why yes. is it such a big event? Why is, should it be of interest to MSPs, managed service providers? I mean, so there are a few big events that Microsoft does through the year. And I think Ignite is probably the one best aligned to most uh, partners, particularly MSPs, because it's it's really, it's not like Build, where it's a, a deeply technical developer focused event. Uh, it's not like Inspire, which is our more broad partner focused event. Uh, this is aimed at that IT pro uh, audience where it's it's taking all of that cool technology and presenting it uh, out there for, for IT pros to get their head around both in terms of the cool stuff that's kind of coming down the line, but all the things that are available now, uh, the interesting things and scenarios that those um, technologies unlock, you know, and from a partner perspective, while it's not specifically a partner event, it is that window into all those things you should be thinking about. You know, these these are the topics, these are the trends, these are the technologies that, you know, you, you should have on your roadmap or you, you should be thinking your customers are thinking about uh, over, you know, the next, I don't know, 12 months or whatever, a couple of years. Uh, so it's that directional event um and of course it's, it's it's exciting as well you know if you're looking for that kind of kool-aid um you know tribal chest thumping excitement about all the, all the cool tech like it is one of those moments where microsoft comes together really well and presents that all up uh message across all the clouds you know it's not just an azure event it's not just a microsoft 365 event it looks at everything and you get to hear from folks like satya of course but if I were a partner, that there would be a couple of marquee events, Build, Inspire, and, and Ignite would be the ones that would just be like burned into my calendar as like, you know, must, must. If you can't if you can't get out there, then you at least catch up on the digital versions or attend 
the streams. You know, I was I did ask my boss, hey, can I can I go out to Seattle? And I sort of got a very straight look back saying, Come on now, no. <laughs> you, you know, that's you let our customers go to that. I was chatting to um some friends at Microsoft about this, and of course. Uh, the interesting thing is, this is the I believe this is the first ignite that's been in person in Seattle since um, since the lockdown, or certainly the first one that's been uh, advertised as such. And in terms of the people attending there, obviously there was a good attendance for it this year. But actually, Microsoft since the lockdown have gone down this route, haven't they, for sustainability reasons? And we'll we'll talk a bit about sustainability in a, in a moment because some interesting tidbits on that coming out of Ignite. But actually, all of us IT pros from all over the world descending on flying across the world and descending on Seattle is not good for the environment, not good for sustainability. So I'm going to give a a big shout out for Microsoft here. They are really, truly committed to sustainability, and we'll talk about that a bit more. But also, the virtual attendee experience was awesome. So I was logged on uh, last week. We're recording this, uh, you know, towards the end of November. I, I logged on and watched the keynote and a few other sessions and that. Just a really good experience. So as you say, uh, Microsoft do virtual events very, very well. I mean, you you kind of hope we would, right? Because we yeah. we make a lot of the technology that goes into it. But I think you're right. There's definitely well, we have to we have to walk the walk as well as talk the talk. You know, when when we say we're committed to sustainability and the impact that we have on the environment, our commitments to you know carbon. Uh, not just not just being carbon neutral, but you know, looking back over our historic footprint and erasing that, and then being intentional about water and power generation, all of these things, they're not just platitudes. You know, these are enshrined in company policy, the way we act, the way we show up. And there's got to be that tension between coming together. You know, there are times when it makes sense to come together as people and 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 in, and enjoy the energy that that brings. But like you say, flying, you know. Five, six, seven thousand, twenty thousand, how you know, how many people it is across the world to congregate in one place a few times a year. There have got to be different and better ways that we can do that. And and I think we do we we do it really well. There's always ways to improve, always. Uh, and to make sure it's inclusive for everyone uh, in a digital fashion. But yeah, I think we're doing we're doing a really good job there. And and I think at least that hybrid approach of some in person, some digital is is not gonna go away anytime soon. I would absolutely agree with you. And uh, one of the pieces of news that I saw come out of uh, Ignite was that on the sustainability, uh, Microsoft uh, sort of shared the the details that their data centers are now carbon neutral. Uh, I didn't know, however, what you said is there, you, Microsoft are going to be looking back over their history and say, okay, we, we didn't know better at the time, uh, so to speak. Um, how can we improve, not only improve, but how can we undo perhaps some of that damage, historical damage there? So big thumbs up from me, because I'm a huge environmentalist and you know, green IT. We write a lot about it on the blog, but I'm loving that approach. Yeah. And I think Again, you know, we're, we're as a hyperscale cloud provider with huge investments in data centers around the world. After a certain point in time, they start to have an impact, right? Both in terms of not just the energy that they consume, or or you know the jobs that they create, or anything like that. But you know, back in the day when you're pouring all this concrete into the earth to create these data centers, you, you, you know, historically that sort of wasn't so much of a, a front of mind consideration as the longevity of that, the, the long term impact. Whereas now we're more aware than ever of of the resources that we have, the limitations of our you know uh, our, of our planet, and I think uh, person on a personal level, I'm incredibly proud of the company's commitment to that. You know, of recognizing that it's not only about what we do going forward, but it's about looking at what we did in the past and understanding the impact that that had, and how we can try and mitigate or remove the impact. Uh, of our past behaviors because it can be done you know we we can yeah. we can take those steps you've just got to be really intentional about doing it and then commit to it um and and over time i think microsoft's got some some big commitments in terms of time scales you know uh quite aggressive ones but it, over time you can do it uh and i think technology will never be the same again in terms of how we design products how we bring solutions to market uh, it, it will it will now always just as security went through that kind of early 2000s explosion of importance. I think sustainability has the same thing now where everything we do from now on has that embedded at the heart of it. How is this sustainable? Um, I I think that's that's only the right way to do things. Absolutely. And we want to use cool tech. Of course, we do. Listeners to this show are all interested in the cool tech, but if we're doing it at the expense of the planet, it's not going to work for us. 
However, let's jump forward. Let's take a look at some of the core tech. So I, I guess we've got to address the big thing. It's, you know, everybody's talking about it. It seems to be front and center for Microsoft's focus. Tell us about Microsoft's invest, investment in AI. Are we investing in AI? I've not heard. I, 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 I've <laughs> seen a few new stories about this here, James. <laughs> You know, AI, but specifically, let's talk about Microsoft Copilot. So all joking aside, for the benefit of our listeners who perhaps haven't kept their finger on the pulse of what Microsoft's investment in AI and Copilot looks like, tell us what that looks like. Oh, man. I mean, where, where to, because, like, you know, what? I knew, I knew you'd be asking me that kind of question. I was like, how do you, how do you begin to to describe the answer to that? Because it's, it's, at the headline level, we've got we've got we've got this explosion, of course, in developments around AI. Everywhere you look, um, whether it's from Microsoft or in the industry at large, even my mum is interacting with ChatGPT and things like that. You know, it it is everywhere, uh, and Microsoft's investment in that has been, in terms of forging partnerships with organisations like OpenAI, and then embedding that kind of tooling into our products and services. On the Azure side, it's things like Azure OpenAI service. Um, but we also know that the way people interact with this technology isn't just by building applications um, and using the kind of uh, back-end tooling uh, like you might expect, like you know, in the data center. It's also about how we embed those, the, those benefits into the tools we use every day from Microsoft Teams and Outlook all the way through to uh, you know, SharePoint Online or, you know, using Viva Engage or whatever it might be, you know, we, we're all in, interacting with technology um, on any kind of device all the time. And so co-pilots are that, uh, that connection for the end user uh, into the power of, of the technology. Uh, so that sounds a bit abstract when you describe it like that. What I mean by that is it's not, you're not having to build anything in using those co-pilots. That is harnessing the power of these large language models and generative AI capabilities and all the rest of it to enhance your productivity as an individual. Um, so for example, uh, summarizing meeting notes is a great, you know, great use case. So rather than have to listen back to a recording or make sure that you're studiously taking notes, I don't know about you, I'm awful at taking notes in meetings. <laughs> now I can have a co-pilot understand what was being said in the meeting, itemize it all out for me, give me the actions and give me the summary practically instantly. And that for me, that's magic because I can then focus on adding value in the meeting and, and participating rather than constantly having to worry about what's being said and things like that. If I'm stuck for ideas, I'm creating a great PowerPoint presentation of content, a co-pilot can help me generate imagery or generate copy that I can then take and edit. It's same if I'm responding to an email, it can summarize threads. I mean, there are so many scenarios where those co-pilots are sitting on your on your shoulder, if you like, and helping you achieve your potential. Um, and and that, that's not really even doing it justice. But the investment that Microsoft has made in this isn't just in creating the technology, but it's in building out that infrastructure to power that technology and crucially secure, secure it and do it in, going back to intentionality, do it in a way that means that when you're providing your company data, when you're letting your users access Bing Chat Enterprise or whatever it might be, it's in that way that your data is safe, it's governed, it's secure, it's not being used to contribute to the generation of another model, those kinds of things. Yeah. It's those guardrails, which are so important. So, you know, you've just got this investment financially, technologically, you know, policy across the board to bring all of this together. And of course, we're now seeing it become available and we're now seeing the stories of customers who've been using this in their organizations. And it is just unlike anything I've seen for years, you know, this outpouring of just, this is amazing. This has transformed the way our people work. It's helped our organization unlock new insights to become more productive or whatever it might be. It's it's just this wave of excitement for it or at scale, not just one or two customers, but dozens and dozens and dozens of customers who've been doing this with thousands and thousands of users. And in fact, I've most recently got access to it uh, as an employee. You know, we're rolling it out to our employees as well. And it is... It is. It's, it's brilliant. Is it going to replace me over time? No, because uh, it can't. It do, can't know what I know. But do I use it to help me supercharge the way I work? Hell yeah! Like it's. It's you know the, these co-pilots are incredible. And of course, one of the things that came out um, at Ignite was the ability to bring that low-code, no-code approach to things to extend that capability. So 
using um, Copilot Studio and things like that to be able to create your own co-pilots you know well, so let's, talk, not- let's talk about that james because you were talking about the excitement i got a real sense of excitement from watching uh, satya nadella's uh, um keynote presentation there and everything that was going on i saw the announcement about co-pilot studio and it looks super interesting but explain for the benefit of listeners why should listeners be interested in co-pilot studio looking at it with my partner hat on this is this is where you you differentiate from someone that can land the technology and deploy it and bill you for it and and support it. Uh, this is where you can you can leap from from that relationship into embedded trusted advisor consultation solving business problems kind of level because using that that ability to customize through those through that studio. Uh, the last mile of those co-pilots to an organization's needs. I mean, an you know, example around creating something that's tied, tied into HR and budgeting systems to create, you know, a responsive way to understand, you know, uh, what your uh, transportation allowance might look like, that kind of thing. Stuff that the model wouldn't know off the off the bat, but being able to tailor it using a very simple logical method uh, to your business needs uh, and then harness the power of those, you know, that chat GPT type model of interaction, those kinds of things, you create hugely compelling experiences for users very, very quickly in a very structured way. And if you and if you can get if you can get into that, like if you've been playing in the sort of power platform space for a little while and you understand that mentality of creating low code, no code solutions, Copilot Studio is going to be your best friend in in taking that to the next level. And I think partners that can harness that power and then turn it into something they can deliver to their customers that that just that takes you that separates you up you know the, 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 up the food chain that's where you unlock the best margins that's when you unlock the deepest relationships because you say you're not just selling a bunch of microsoft 365 licenses and deploying them or transacting a bunch of azure compute or whatever you're then applying your expertise to that next level and helping those customers create those custom experiences that take you from something that's really good for as a productivity tool to something I cannot live without. Yeah, I, I, I love that approach. And it, that's why I got so excited about it. Thank you for explaining. And what we'll do at the you know, on the on Tublog, we will include show notes with links to all these technologies that James mentions uh, here. Uh, so please don't worry if you're out walking or, or driving the car or whatever. We'll we'll give you we'll go a little bit deeper with the show notes so you can go and check these things out. Another tech that jumped out to me um, was Microsoft Loop. What is it? Why is it interesting? I love Loop. I've been using. I've been. You know, I was so excited for Loop to uh, to to get to where it is today because I've been. I've used very similar tools that um, that have existed uh, in other forms. Uh, there's probably some like Microsoft Ninja waiting if I name them. Yeah, but you know, solutions <laughs> like Notion and, and and stuff like that, yes. right? I've been a big OneNote user for a while, and what I love about Loop is uh, it brings. Uh, a much more flexible canvas together. So OneNote is great for taking notes, but the fact that I can uh, have a loop workspace where multiple people can bring, uh, you know, uh, their thoughts and ideas together into one place that can share that easily across the organization uh, from loop itself. But the components themselves are modular. So I can, like, I use a loop component all the time when planning meetings. We have a regular meeting series and when I'm in the chat with the participants, I fire in a loop component that create, you know, allows people to collaborate on an agenda within the chat space. Uh, like, so the ability to have those rich, uh, as I say, components within other elements of um, the productivity tool set, as well as in the loop workspace itself, it's it's fantastic. So I'm not I'm not limited in in, in the way that I can work there, um, and I can embed those in more and more places. So loop, it's like the, the most simplistic way to describe it is note taking on steroids. That's a very simplistic way to look at it. Yeah. But you know, it is it is that canvas of rich editing capabilities that you that you can pull together. Um, but it's it's embedded in a way across the product set that out uh, that um, uh, that OneNote wasn't. You know, so uh, 
I, I, I can't, yeah, I can't sort of, without visually showing you. It's <laughs> it's part of the podcast. Which is exactly why, James, I said, explain what it is, because you've done it a lot better than I ever could. But I would say, yeah, note-taking on steroids plus, plus, plus yeah. uh, is a great way uh, to describe it. So, yeah, for the benefit of listeners, Microsoft Loop, go and check out some online videos of it from uh, from Ignite, uh, a gr- another interesting tool. I'm conscious our time is uh, constrained here, so I'll try to, for you and I, not to get too excited about the billion, billion uh, announcements that were at Microsoft Ignite. But I want to say, you know, your your job title, what you do, you help with partner partners with Microsoft Azure, and we'll get onto that very briefly in a minute. What does all of this mean for Azure, though? Because, James, we're going to have MSPs, IT professionals listening to this, perhaps in their early days of getting on, on board the, you know, the Azure uh, bandwagon there. And they're already thinking, oh, is it getting too far ahead of me already? What would you say to those people? I mean, I'm glad you phrased it like that, because there is that, there is that perception perhaps that te- the technology landscape is is evolving so quickly and and uh the stretch from the world that you know today uh or have been working in for the last few years and and kind of where it's going it just seems so far now but the reality is none of the future is possible without solid foundations today so you can't benefit from all of these great large language models generative ai tools co-pilots, all the rest of it, unless you have great data in the cloud, secured and governed, you know, uh, managed and monitored, all the core capabilities that partners have been building for a while now still are crucial in order to unlocking that next step of the journey. There's no shortcut to go from a typically on-prem environment or hosted environment into the future. You've got to, you've got to go through that migration phase and do all of those things. And I think for a lot of MSPs that are sitting there scratching their head thinking about, well, how do I get across this? Uh, start by starting. You know, yeah. you, the expectation isn't that everyone in your organization is going to become an AI expert overnight. But you do have to start to form an opinion because you're going to have to start reacting to customers' questions. I was at an event the other day and I asked folks to put their hands up uh, if they were someone or knew someone uh, who had played with tools like ChatGPT. And with the exception of myself and the photographer, every single hand went up. Yes. And obviously my, my, I'm not going to hold my I answer my own question, right? And I, I, I couldn't believe it. It's like every single hand went up. And we're all customers and we're all end users of our own organizations and companies, right? So we were a reflection on what's happening in the market to a certain extent. So this isn't like the days of a couple of people have played with a hypervisor or some people are using tablets or whatever. Like universally now, people are exposing uh, exposed to this technology. So if you don't even have an opinion on it, let alone a capability, then yeah, you know, that that train is is leaving the station at a rapid pace. But it it's 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 about those those baby steps and just understanding how you work with organizations. Uh, what you want to be known for, and I've listened to you, you know, folks that have spoken on your epi- uh, podcast before episodes that you know where they've 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 talked about partnering with other partners, yes. you know, where where you don't have the capability, go find someone who does, build that relationship, and complement each other. And I think that's that's true as well in this world. Not everyone is a great dynamics partner, but there are great dynamics partners out there who will partner with you, and and, and that kind of thing. And I think that's going to be true for AI as well. Is as you're on your journey to building that capability. Go work with people who are who are in the same boat, who are you know who are building complementary capabilities. That's going to be the way to shortcut these things. Um, because if you kind of stick your fingers in your ears and ignore it and think that it's a fad, you, you are going to you, you know your customers pretty soon are going to get spoken to by an MSP who can do those things. Yeah. You know, no one want, no one wants that either, to be the guy left behind. So, I think as I say, start by starting. Just take those first steps. Think about skills. More importantly, have an opinion on what you're gonna what you're gonna do when asked by your customers, and just start putting those those wheels in motion. Um, but like I said earlier, like if you can start to land some of these capabilities, they are the pathway to much better profitability, much stickier relationships, much happier customers that stay with you for the long term. So I think there is there is a real need to do something. Uh, don't wait. 
Yeah, James, you couldn't have said it better. A long time listeners to this show will know that I get on my soapbox and bang the drum about strategic alliances or buddying up with other technology companies. So glad to hear it come from somebody else as well, because it is it was fundamentally me growing my managed service provider business. We focused on our core competencies, partnered up with other people who were way wiser and way smarter uh, than we were in the tech that they dealt with. And it just makes for uh, a you know, harmonious relationship for everybody in a better place so thank you you've been absolutely awesome james sharing this i know you've got to shoot off now i've got to disappear as well but i've got to tell you talking of partners i'm out for i'm in manchester at the moment uh just about to go to the managed services north managed service summits north mouthful there yeah. up in manchester but i'm off out for dinner tonight with a great microsoft partner the guys from pax eight ah, uh, yes yeah, and uh, so I'm excited to sit down and have a bit of a geeky conversation with the guys at Pax Eight and talk about some of the uh, some of the news coming out of Ignite. So thanks for educating me and our listeners on what happened at Ignite. It's been really good. Will you come back on the show in the very near future and talk a little bit more about Microsoft Azure, perhaps? I would love to. Yeah, it'd be an absolute pleasure. Um, and as I said, thank you again for having me on this this bonus ode. But yeah, I'd love to to have a, a, a bigger conversation about all things Azure. We will organise that. But I'm going to say for the benefit of any listeners, and they're like, oh, James sounds like a good guy. I want to connect with him because it is your job to help partners, isn't it, with their Azure setup and all things Microsoft realistically. Um, how can anybody listening who wants to continue the conversation, how can they find you online, James? Uh, in most places, um, or certainly the ones that matter, I'm just James B. Marshall. Uh, you can follow me on, I know, we're calling it Twitter, right? No one's calling it X. It's Twitter. Elon, so, nobody calls it X. It's I'm Twitter, still, it's Twitter, it's Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm James B. Marshall there. I'm James B. Marshall on LinkedIn. Um, and honestly, the best place to follow me is there at the moment. I run a newsletter, which I publish every two weeks, uh, which talks all about building great Azure practices and all the things that you need to know. So you can always reach out to me and connect with me there. Subscribe to the newsletter as well. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'm always like, if anybody ever wants to talk about building an Azure uh, practice, then then just drop me a message. Always happy to grab 30 minutes on a call and talk through people's ideas and challenges and, and help them on their way. James, you are awesome. I'm so grateful for, for Guy Gregory uh, connecting us. I, I'm sure we're going to be firm friends into the future. We are on the same wavelength, and I don't think I'm alone in that. You're going to have a lot of new fans from people listening to this show. James, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your event. I will speak to you soon. Cheers. Hey folks, Richard here. Thanks for listening today. I know you've got a ton of options for who you listen to nowadays, so I really appreciate your support. Do you have any feedback on this episode? Ideas for future guests? Tweet me at Tublog using the hashtag TubTalk. I respond to every tweet and really appreciate your feedback. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off, and that is MSP Insights. Now, every Tuesday, I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business, plus cool resources I found, discovered, or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.